go from February 6 all the way down here on this low. And I was a buyer in this range here, mainly because of the fact that this was, if we go back further on the chart, we can see this is your support area right here. And it starts all the way from where it broke out from, which is in that 8,000 range right there. You see this over here all the way back in the chart back in November. And here's the first high, pulls back, goes over, goes back to that high, consolidates, goes across for several days, then breaks out. This is the breakout from this point. Okay. And then... When we come back to it, you know, from the big decline that we had, that was all, all the way up to, we went up to 20,000, right? Um, this would be your logical area for support. So this becomes an area of interest to me. I start buying. Um, it, it goes all the way down to here, which is another uh, median point. This is the right along this axis line right here. That's your medium, right around 6,000. Now, that does that make sense why I would want to become a buyer? Can you see what I'm looking at back in the chart? I'm going back all the way to November and looking for spots, median spots in price that average out. That is important. Okay. And that's what we're going to build our ratios off of on highs and lows. Now, let me also preface this by saying we're not here to predict. All right, I see far too many people saying, where is price going to go? You don't want to think that way. That's, that's where you start locking yourself into a thought, and that's going to cause you problems. What we have to do is learn to become observers of what price does most of the time and say this is what's possible from any one point. Uh, if we get into that knob psychology of where we're trying to be Miss Cleo and predict the future, that's bad. All right, I'm going to tell you that straight off the bat. Don't do it. Get out of that habit. It's a habit, and you want to get rid of it. Give me one second. Unmute. Hmm. It's not letting me mute everybody. Why is that, oh, Ivo? Yeah, I was looking for it, but something changed in the. Okay, I muted all again. Yeah. Including, I guess I muted. I didn't mute you, right? Yeah, yeah. You, 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 no, you mute me too, but I, I'm the <laughs> only one that can <laughs> unmute myself. <again. laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's what I do. Okay, so, All right, but you, you get my point how I went back in the chart and I looked for support points? Okay, because from there, you that's where structure is. That, that structure is where your support and resistance and uh, your highs and lows are created, and they create little houses like the patterns and so forth. And then from there, we're going to work ratios of where it's possible to find resistance or targets. All right, so you understand that, that ratios and, uh, uh, you know, uh, they are based off of structure, okay? That's the, the number one thing that I want to make clear is that the ratios are just not um, uh, there to be uh, based off of a high and a low. You could, but there's no structure. There's not going to be any real meat behind it. Um, so you have to go over and, and build structure. This, this large body that you see right here, is a structure. And if we go back in the chart, it could be an, an even bigger structure if we go back even further, right? So let's go back to January, a few months before the, the February. And we'll go all the way back to the top. When did the that was actually in December. The decline started in January. It was like the 6th, I think it was. When we retraced from here, we had the first drop, and then it retraced up here. This built structure, 
And if we went to here, I can tell you right off the, without even thinking about it, that's going to be 61.8% of the range, right? So let's grab a fib. And we're going to take it from our high to low. See, this is going to drive me nuts. This program is lagging me. Um, all right. We want to take the base there, and we want to take the top here. Go to the very tippy top, right? And sure enough, that goes right above 61.8% of the low. All right, so we get a high and a low. We build structure. It goes up to 61.8% drops back down. Um, now, what happens is you're looking for several things, and this is called confluence. Confluence is when you get a multiple um, of like support and resistance, and you get multiple fits working together to go over and give you resistance or support. This one wound up being resistance. All right, so we had a pattern up here. We got the pullback. Now, if I draw a median line, this is important because I always use medians, and I call it back and front. All right. When you hear me talking about, uh, give me one second, I'll answer your questions. But when you hear me talking about the uh, highs and the lows, I'm pointing to the the front, which is the highest value and then the back, all right? So we've got two in the back right here. We're going to take the line and go directly across. Now, what does that do? That encompasses its price. One, two, three, four. It comes back then one, two. We could actually add more here. Now, if we count the highest number of candles where they intersect, does that make sense? That's a visual point. All right, so give me a yes, that makes sense. I can see from those highs, the back ones and the front one, um, where they all intersect. That creates a median. Okay, that median is important. That is what price is based off of. Okay, that's where you're likely to find resistance. Um, now, there's a few things. Uh, it's above the 61.8. But that's a logical point where um, prices can uh, continue back down from or go back above. And I'm going to show you that going forward today, how we're going to look for prices to pull back down and how they can go back up based off of what we have all the way over here. But we'll save that. First, I want you to grasp the concepts of why you're using the FIBs. When things retrace, they usually go two-thirds of the value greater, which is 61.8, okay? That is when you get a completed, meaning you have structure, a completed pattern, or a completed bottom, right? Um, a high-low, a divergence. Um, we'll, we'll go over more, you know, uh, but just the concept alone. We got a median that adds here, and we have a confluence with the 61.8. So this whole area becomes resistance. Okay, and we don't have to be exact. We just have to have a basis of where we want to be a seller. So I was selling here, and I was selling there, and I was scaling out. Does that make sense to you? Why I would scale out, and why I would do it on multiple levels? I sold some there. And I sold some right here. And then I was going to start buying again. Where would I start buying again? I would start buying again under the lows and then selling. Back. It repeated the th same things over and over. And the nice thing about when you scale off of ratios, dips, and support and resistance, you're doing it according to the structure of the market. So you're never going to really be wrong, even when you are 
because there are plenty of times when you'll get caught in positions, but because of the fact that you're going in and out, your dollar cost averaging, you're rolling them over and you're building up your percentages over time. And it's small amounts, it, it, but it adds up. And um, But now back to the, the fibs. So we go all the way back down and we break down from this high and low. Now let's flip the fibs. We're going to take the highs and lows from the top and we're going to go the other way. All right, and we're going to do it off of the median. Let's see, let's go off the median of price would be right in here. Now, what I want to do is capture the highest number of points. And this is going to be kind of a strange way for, you know, a person to use FIBS, but it's no less invalid because it captures the highest amount of price. And um, that's what you're going to see that I do. I capture the highest number of price. So I'm looking from this high low. That's a, uh, you know, a, a pattern point. You see one, two, three, four, five. That's structure. All right. And so this right here, uh, you can see where you drop back down here. Um, you go back up. That is structure again. You create multiple points. You go back up to here. You drop back down. You pull back up. You're creating structure all along this line, and it corresponds to a median value right in there. So now does that make sense to you, the way that I'm just looking at it? I'm calculating the points. I'm not doing it just off of a... Uh, one area. I'm doing it off of multiple iterations of what I can see. But everything is based off of what is visually there. So from this pattern, from everything in here in price, I go over and I do my median values and I connect the dots of where it makes the most sense. And you can scale it up and down. You can say, okay, it makes sense more from here but in reality, right there, this point right here, where the structure first happened, makes the most sense. You can see it basing, and you might have a little bit where it goes too far and it snaps back and extreme, but this is the relative value is the median is right here. All right, from there to the top, all right, and then we're going to extend it down, and we can see we're 172.8 right here on the flip side from that median is the ratio. This area becomes our support area, our larger support from 77.81 and on. Now, you can go also, I, I do this too, is I can see my 161.8 which would be a little bit higher right up, up here. I don't even have to put in the ratio. I can, you know, you can calculate uh, two thirds of the value and space it out, which is going to be right in here. And uh, that is, you know, how I go over and choose targets. I'm doing it off of ratios every time. Uh, you see me draw any formation. I am using the FIBS this way to, um, to calculate. So let's look at the numbers of how you want to calculate FIBS when you put it on a chart. Um, when I do it, I add 38, 61.8, and 88.6 of the inside range. That's the high and the low. All right, does that make sense? So those are the key FIBS. There are three of them inside from zero to one. All right, so when you put them in your calculations, if you want to follow what I do, you're going to go over and choose 38.2, 61.8, and 88.6 of the inside range. That's how I was able to calculate this down here to go over and get 6,600 and then cycle back up to that 61.8.
All right, so that's what the three key fibs that I use on the inside range. Now, I'll be on the outside range, the extension. What do I use on the outside range? I use 172.8 and 2. Now, what is 2? Two? 2 is Gaussian. It is the double, the exact geometric double, like mitosis with a cell, right? So something doubled in price. So when you get a break from one range to another and you have pattern structure, you look from 172.8, which is more of the natural numbers, I call them, and then the equal numbers. In nature, you, as an engineer, you don't have an exact. Things are nonlinear. That basically means they do not work off of exacts. Everybody wants there to be a computed number, like Elliott Waves theorists, which that's nice, but charts don't always do what we want them to. Okay, we'll set up use fitful. I want to do this myself. Eric, can, you, can you mute? Okay, so can you, the first thing you're going to have to learn again? is to use the fib tool. So I'm going to show you how that works. Do you want to learn that? I'm getting a message about the fib tools. So I, I'm picking it in my head that you guys already know how to, to do that, but maybe you don't. So let's go over and first choose on TradingView. Do most of you use TradingView or um, uh, MT4? Okay, I'll mute everybody again. Give me one second. He said, so let's see. Boom, and that should be muted. Right. All right, so back to what I was saying. Let's go over and use the tool. Let's start from point A, because you're right. You might, I'm taking this as for granted that you know how to use this. Maybe you don't. Well, in TradingView, it's, that's the first thing that we should do is um, in the future, Ivo, is we're going to do everything from TradingView. And what we're going to do is go over and use uh, an example of setting up the indicators and the, the tools of the chart. Um, so we'll come up with uh, something to give somebody who's new uh, a basis to use that. Yeah, okay, right. that's, that's so really nice. That would be a good idea. Yeah. Um, all right, so here in the tools on the far left-hand side, my left hand, you're going to see a bunch of different tools. I'm not going to go into the GAN and all that. I'll do it in the future, but we're going to go to the FIB tool. This is the one I use the most. And by, once you click on that, you then can choose a point like a high and a low. And once you do that, let's say that we choose these two points right here. You draw it from the top. You click on the top and you click on the bottom from the high, low, or low, high, whichever direction you're going on. And you'll see that little circles pop up. And these little circles represent your ends. And you can control them. You can move them up or down and re-move uh, them to any way you want. Um, and you generally do it off the of high lows, like I was saying. Now, what you also do is you can double click on them. And by double clicking on them, guess what's going to happen? You're going to bring up your ratios. Come on. Today would be nice. There we go, finally. And your ratios in uh, TradingView, this is where you're going to control the percentages because they come to a default. They come with certain ones already defaulted. Well, the ones that we're going to focus on are we're going to check market. When you check market, it will um, pop up on your screen. Okay. You can also change the colors of them if you want. Uh, if you notice that you have different colors in the boxes, you can uh, 
you know, change the colors and make it whatever you want. You know, uh, you have that ability as well. But the main thing is that you look for the ones that you want, 38.2, 61.8. And this one, I think, is going to be 76, but I changed it from 76 very simply by putting in the 0 0.886 because you want it to be zero because that encompasses um, zero to one, right? That's your inside range. Once you go to one and over, you're going on the extension. All right, does that make sense? I'm going to say yes for you. So, all right, so we want to 38, 61.8 and 88.6. You can uncheck everything else. The one and the zero are your naturals. They're, that's beginning and end. Um, so, you, of course, you can keep them. You can get rid of them if you don't want to look at them, but they're still going to be there. Um, now, from there, on the extension where we go and we look for the extension levels, we want to choose 172.8 and 2. Okay, well, I'm going to go over it again and again and become a broken record. I'll, I'll use this as in all future webinars because that's what I calculate price off. It's the, the natural numbers. Uh, it's what most things break out to. And uh, it's what you were one of the reasons why I was buying in the 6000 and selling when we went back up to um, you know, 8200 to 85 and 9,000, and it was based off of all these little structures and whatnot, and I scale out, and I'll scale back in once we go down to 78 to 7,400, I'll repeat the whole thing over and again. And it's more likely to happen than not be just because of the nature of price. And if we go up to 9,600, for example, I will sell more there. The, the first thing is that I'm always long the market. I have no choice. It's just I'm bullish on crypto, and I think prices are going to ever go higher. But what I do is I hedge and I uh, uh, profit extra by the movement in between price, you know, constantly going up and down. Kind of like people who dra day trade the, the altcoins, which I'm not a big doer of. I'll do it if I see a real extreme move, but that's not my thing. Um, though I, I'm going to do more of that just because I want to see the validity of trading the short-term moves and see and whatnot. But anyway, I won't get into that. I know there are a lot of people that are much better at that than I, and I hope they'll do webinars in the future and show what they know because I don't know everything. I, I, I'll show you, you know, the the old school um, uh, fibs and and dollar cost averaging and buying and selling. But my way of doing prices are kind of um, uh, my own point of view. And, you know, I dollar cost average. I'm always on the buy side. I'm always buying and uh, holding uh, also as well. And I'm just hedging against my, my holds, if that makes sense to you. Um, but back to the FIBs, we got zero, 38.2, 61.8, 88.6. Then we go up to 172.8 and 2. 2 is double of 1. That's your geometric. That's your doubling in price. Most patterns like head and shoulders, um, they're going to have targets of 2. I put in the 172.8 because prices in nature don't always go to that 2. There's, um, you know, it, it's a ratio of. Just like you don't get 100% water, you're 72.8% water. <laughs> and I'll tell you about carbon and hydrogen and, and the balances of there, how it averages it out to 172.8. But you're not going to be interested in that. So if you understand that natural ratio, that's why I'm going between different values. Just like I can use 161.8, but that's, um, that is statistically not as... Um, likely on an extension as 172.8 is. So the reason why I'm not using 161.8 is because 172.8 hits more often. 
if that makes sense, and you get greater profit. So that is your tool of the uh, on trading view. You just go to back to here. You just remember what I said. You go back to the, the tool over here. It's the third one down. You choose the fibs, and then you draw it from a high low. Oh, great. Somehow this just changed. If somebody has control of my screen, I will shoot you. I will find you, and I'll shoot you. Um, just kidding. Let's see. Why did that do that? Let's see. go back here. <laughs> I'm going to mute all again, but I can't. All right, so everybody must be muted already. All right, so first off, what I want to do back to BTC. All right, so we're back in Bitcoin. So when I calculated the values out going from way back when, and I used my FIB tools, I did it like that. I did it as a median in price. Let's also go back to the daily. Nice, but I want to. All right, so from those points all the way back up here, I calculate the ratios going all the way back on to here. All right, so anyway, now I had structure, and I'm going to show you fibs that go back out here. I had structure from this point one, two, three, four, and five. All right. Now, if you remember, I'm going to take my FIB tool. Once you put the values in the FIB tool on TradingView, it will save it automatically for you so you don't have to change it in the future. That's one thing I'm going to tell you. All right. So I'm going to go from this low to this high. This is point one to point two, by the way, on the pattern. All right, in this pattern, I'm going to show you what that pattern is. And you're going to be amazed. Well, maybe not, but I hope you are. Let's see. So now I'm going to go down to my next tool, which is the little brush. And this is where I can draw my little pat my um, triangles, my curves arcs, rectangles, whatever I want from there, right? They're my drawing tools. And I'm going to create from the first low where it drew structure, show you the points. This is point one. This is point two. It's a high low. Now, inside the range, you're going to have point three, which is the next low. And amazingly enough, between these highs and lows, they're going to all rate out to 61.8 to 88.6 the majority of the time. Um, that's the normal range that they go down to on the first two. One, two, to three. All right. So when I'm drawing this pattern that you see me draw often, um, this is how I calculate it to calculate the structure. And it usually comes from it breaking out of a previous pattern. Okay. Our broadcasting grid, maybe that slows things down. No, what slows things down is just the fact that I'm using the extension right up here in uh, the Cisco web extension. So it actually slows down the... Um, the whole charting program, the whole web browser, because it's using resources. And if we use the um, actual program, 
uh, that frees up the resources from the web browser and then things from what Ivo told me happen a lot faster. Um, but let's get back to the chart because I want you to you guys to to understand this. This is important. Okay, when I'm drawing patterns and getting ratios, I'm not doing it because it just looks pretty. <laughs> um, there's a logic behind it. Now, I want you to tell you when you get structure, one, two, three. That is your your large your um, impulse wave. This is your first impulse wave. Um, between uh, three and four, this is fits inside the price. This creates your body. Okay, this is the body inside here between the ends. Okay. Now we're going to draw another triangle. I'm going to go back down to my tools, select it again, click on it. And then I'm going to go from 3 to point 0.4. Point 0.4 on these butterflies, sea monsters, call them what you want, is important because that is our target level. That's going to be what we're looking for. And I generally draw them all the way down to 200% of their range. Isn't that amazing? 172.8 to 200%. All right, when I draw these patterns. Uh, that is my extension. You see how I got that? So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, then 5. 5 is your blowout move, your... Um, the extension, the giant impulse move that causes everybody to panic and freak out. Okay? This is where everybody just went nuts. And I love it when people go nuts because that gives me an opportunity to profit. I want to see people going crazy. Um, that um, is how I get the pattern. So now I have five points, right? So we have one two, three, four, and five. You can see how I based my ratios off of the, the uh, first high and the low right here, right? Low to high, and then it encompasses price. We get the break, and it extends all the way down. Now, this is not perfect. This is one thing I want you to... This majority of the time will go from 172 to 2, and sometimes it will extend even out, like um, we had short-term happen because of the bigger patterns over here in, in this price zone. I'll show you that because I'm going forward out from the past. All right, but do you see how I was able to um, draw that? Do you get the, the logic behind it? Because you're going to see this a lot. This is, the most, this is mostly what I use, and this is how I calculate things. Um, I use trend lines, support, resistance, medians. I use the points in structure. I use the uh, extensions on the fibs. Yeah, you can. Well, I don't like to use the idea of predictive. It's what happens most often. Okay. Uh, I, I want you to stay away from trying to predict the future because nobody knows the future. I, I can go over and draw what likely resistance and support zones there because they're there, not because I'm trying to be Miss Cleo, but because of the fact I'm, I'm observing all these different elements and I'm adding together to get a value, if that makes sense to you. I'm trying to ra rationalize the value. I'm not trying to predict the future. I can say that this is a pattern we're drawing and we're breaking down and we do that. Okay, and it does that. And I can say that this point to this point diverges and that that occurs. I can say that as well. And it, I'm correct. I'm observing what's there. And you know, let's mute that again. There. All right, why is it... Uh, People, please mute your own audio. Well, the only reason that would not work is because it would it would uh, they were re-entering. Huh. Okay. Oh yes, yeah. Okay. So anyway, 
do, you, do we see how I made that connection here? So give me some feedback from the... Uh, man, this is a pain. Give me the stupid window. Okay, there's the chat window. Yep, I draw them in advance. It happens most of the time, right? I can only go by what happens most of the time. I can't predict the future, and sometimes you're going to be wrong because of the nature of the market. There is randomness in life, and you could have a news event. You could have any number of things occur that you have no control over, and uh, I want you to understand that. Uh, you're not trying to be right or wrong. You're trying to just observe what happens most often. Uh, by doing that, you give yourself an edge. Um, anybody who goes over and believes in something where they start to ignore reality, here's, here's the problem with it, is that you will build a base and say, I've got this calculation, this is going to happen, right? And you allow yourself no room for that not happening. And once you do that, you're locked into a psychology and you're no longer, if that psychology if price disconnects from it and does something else, you are going to keep executing based on the information of the past and no longer execute based on the new information of the future. Does that, do you understand why I want to keep you away from trying to be predicting? All right, or trying to think, or I feel, or anytime I see people say that in the chat room, it bothers me. Because I know what is happening in your mind. And, um, and that's, you, you don't want to do that. You want to plan for things, and you want to do the best you can, but you want to leave an open mind that price can do anything at any one time and to you know, try to navigate the best way. I mean, it's, you, you can't be perfect, but you want to, Go along that line. Um, what you, made you use those? Median averages mainly and structure. All right, this right here was a breakdown of, of a previous range. When you see you break away from a high or a low, and you no longer have structure, you have nothing that build a basis from. Right. It went under this low. It went under this low. It went under that low. It started to drop under these lows. It broke a higher, uh, this lower point right here. That was a major point, by the way. When you broke that point, okay, you created a new wave of selling and the sellers took over from there. And that is the lowest point. You broke it. Um, you did retrace momentarily up to this point here, but then you continued down. But do you see how this whole area was the median? Remember that line that I drew? And we went back in the chart, and I showed you the five waves from here, right? One, two, three, four, five, all the way up there. It started right from here, and I could say even there, even that point right there, those two candles intersecting. Um, but it was all the basis right from there. Then we got closes over here. Um, we've got the lows here, spike candles. But do you see how I'm building a, a median a basis? And I'm looking for lows, and I'm trying to interconnect the different points. Now, I'm not doing it in a didactic, perfectionist way. I'm doing it just from a, a rational, logical basis, because it could stop here, it could have stopped here. It could have stopped all the way up here. It doesn't matter. I, I can't. I, I'm just looking for an area, okay? And um, then I'll let God sort it out because I'm not trying to predict or trying to control anything. I'm trying to just find a rational idea. Um, no, I'm not going to show those because that's going to be for another another time. Right now, I'm going to I'm going to show. Um, just these because I, I have to go through the cycling of price. Um, I could show you what I would consider a bullish breakout and a triangulated pattern, but let's let's save that for another time because that's um, that goes into a whole new category. 
and I, I'm definitely going to save that. And that's going to go with divergences. And, um, yeah, well, not, not much it's a teaser. <laughs> that would be Ivo's, Ivo's thinking. He likes that. He likes to use in the teasers. But, no, it's, it's really a separate area. And that's when I will go into divergences, using them with the patterns and how to actually tell when you're going to get a bullish versus a bearish. Um, because there are a bunch of things. And yeah. Uh, but anyway, in the meantime, we see the points on the extensions of this pattern, right? And you'll see that I use this most often uh, as a basis for trading. Okay? And you can see how I use these FIBs. And these are the FIBs that I use, right? So we get 38, 61.8, 88.6 into the 1.0. So that's the main structure, the inside view. And then we have the extended 172.8 to 200%, right? Okay. That was, that's your, your main structure and your extension. So when price is created this, 0.4 is up here, right? I then went back to my median psychology in reality, that dotted line, that red line that you see there, is my resistance, right? Because that's my point four. See, that's the thing about this pattern. is the majority of time on this extension, this large move down, this creates the inverse relationship where it goes back up here to test it. So all these people went nuts and they panicked. And they created an empty vacuum of price, right? And they all got washed out between 0.4 to 0.5. And everything in here became empty energy. And what happens most of the time is that it retraces towards uh, that 0.4. Now, it might do it up to 61.8. It might go the full length all the way up to here. In this case, it went all the way back up to it and then found resistance right at that 11,800 area in there. And then 500, I started to exit because I saw a divergence on the chart, uh, if I remember correctly. And I think I did this in the room. If uh, I have a, uh, my memory serves me, yeah, I was the seller in the 500 range. We dropped back down. We retested up here, and then we made the next move down. And uh, I started buying again at, I think it was right around here. And we can see, because I'm going to show you some more fibs. But anyway, this was the first move. Had structure, you had your five points, and then you had your retrace. Now, do you see buyer down here? seller up here. You see how I scaled in, scaled out. Now, if you do this over and over again and you play these moves up and down, do you see how that adds commutative value to your, 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 uh, your money over time? Do you see how it grows? And that's what I do again and again. And, um, uh, and it's sometimes I do it off of smaller patterns. Sometimes I do it off of, you know, larger ones. Um, but now we're building structure, and I'm going to go out from a high. We're going to start looking at this right here. This was our last high, right? So this is going to give us uh, a high and a low. So that's 6,600. First, you know, um, how was I able to predict this area here? So let's delete everything off this chart because I don't want your eyes not to become focused on the past, but the future. Come on. There we go. Okay, get rid of that too because it's going to make you want to go into triangles. Um, all right, so now from this point to that point right there, all right, this is our high-low. 
this is right here on the 6th, the low, right? And then we go to the high, which was right on the 20th a few weeks later. And we have our two points of interest. So we're going to take right here. We're going to put the zero point here. Damn it. Heck with that. I'm not going to waste my time trying to scale the chart out. This is such a lag, I cannot. I'm going to show you how I was able to calculate the cycle move and tell you an interesting thing in nature about progression and regression of uh, just the way um, things decline and um, uh, you know uh, exponentially move. Um, so when they grow or they die. They do so usually in percentages. And if we go down here from this low to this high, from the 6th to the 20th, um, we have structure. One, two, three, four, five. So you can't see it, but there are little waves in here. So one, two, three, four, five. And then goes right up to here, creates a divergence. That was an area that I was selling in. And this was resistance right up there at that time. Okay. So we have our high low right here. And this is our bigger range, right? Then we go back up here, retest it, and create like a double top. And we have a center point right down here. That becomes our resistance point. And... Also, it's going to intersect right with the 618 in the future. Okay, what was that question right there? Let's go back here. Let me the, uh, also think between the longer periods, one between buying one day to three days. Between buying and selling, there are four to seven days to even weeks. Um, let me really see where we're at. Right uh, not going to predict. I, I say that you can see what happens most of the time on a chart. Um, you know, uh, because patterns are relative to what you're drawing on the time frame. So because you have one pattern that fits within a few days, you might have another pattern that intersects over a period of weeks or even months, um, just like, you know, the further out that you go in the chart. Um, but let's focus on what was created in a large range between the six and the 20th, right? right up here to this high. And right there at that high. And that is the 20th. And between those two weeks, that was, you have your range, okay? Now, I from the high-low, I went over and um, calculated that, right? And I had my center point drops down here. Now, did it have to do this? No, it just did. Okay, that's what it created. So this high and this low became of interest to me for trading. So it retested up here and then did the drop, broke down under here. Remember that center point? It does a break, kind of like that break of this one over here to create this five-wave structure on there on that previous um, pattern. Um, it did so again, and it breaks under this center point, which is key between the high-low. It already retested up here, so it, it went up to the energy up at that point. But anyway, we are in the inside range. You have structure on the inside range, and you'll see this. It didn't create a structure like this. It created one like this, which is more like an M, right, uh, a butterfly. But it did it on the inside. 
It didn't do it on the outside. This one did it on the outside. This was an outside range from this point. And if I can wanted to, I can sit on the inside from here, but I won't go on to that. It doesn't matter. Um, now, from here, I put in my 88.6 and my 61.8. Why did I do that? All right, well, let's see. So we dropped down to 38, uh, went down to 50, and we went all the way down to the 61.8. But we never cycled back up to the 38. We got close, but we never did. And if in energy wise, things in nature cannot or do not often complete unless they cycle between one to two thirds of the value in something. Okay? Um, that's just something that happens in nature when a plant grows or uh, it loses leaves or branches. Um, if it loses over one third, it gets hurt by a decent amount when it takes longer to grow. Um, just like in poker, uh, example, if you can make somebody in poker put in one-third or more of their pot in one hand, you can probably get him to go to bet all the way and to uh, make him go all in. And it's a psychological loss aversion thing that's built into us because it's a natural number. Uh, so what I'm saying is if you have a uh, decline of two-thirds in value and you don't retrace up to that 38% or greater, the next time you have another decline, it becomes weaker. Okay? So this move that dropped down to 61.8 and then pops back up here and goes does not go all the way back up to 38%, from two-thirds back to one-third, this became a weaker move. And I'm going to show you how this move that we're currently in, where we're up to like 9,000, is also a weaker move. But first, let's focus on this. So do you see how we didn't go from... Uh, 61.8 to 38.2, then, then cycle back to there. Instead, we cratered and went all the way down to 88.6. Guess what 88.6 was? The past few weeks, if you've been here, you noticed that I've been buying and saying this is your support zone. Why is that? Because more than likely, this uh, 88.6 is going to cycle back to 61.8. And the reason it does that is because it never completed the energy from 61.8 from 38.2. It never cycled back up to there. So this next move down became weaker and created a divergence. The energy became less. Even though the move was greater in size, it had less energy. So these sellers down here were really not... Um, uh, they created a vacuum. So this became, this developed into structure later on, and that's why it based down there, because of the fact that the, uh, it, the energy was less. It dissipated, and that's why you got a spike up, and you had all this price action, and you get these bounces off the bottom, and it created diamond, right? And that's where we're currently at, right? Um, and then we retraced and went, went all the way back up to the 61.8 from the 88.6. So it's cycled fully now. So now this 61.8 becomes um, uh, the previous of the low, becomes an area of interest. Now I'm going to show you how I flip it back around because now you're going to be like, well, okay, but what about this? high and this low because this is our current high low right we 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 can go back to here now we have to actually flip it back around and we have to look for this point all right so we see where we came from we see how i got this number we see what i looked for does that make sense so you're going to kind of remember this all right so does that make sense to you as far as what i'm saying so we didn't 
when we didn't go to the 38% that time from 61.8, if that doesn't happen, it goes down to the 88.6. What will often happen is that 88.6 becomes support and um, goes back to 61.8 before it decides to continue higher or lower. All right, so that occurred. And uh, we went up to that point. That's why I made this my target area. And um, then from there, if we invert the high and low between here to there from where we were, we're going to flip it back. Our 61.8 goes up to 9,600. Our 38 is probably in the 83, 8,400 area um, between this uh, high and this low down here. Okay, so we're going forward. And now we're going to go a little bit further forward, and I'm going to start expanding on the chart. Let's get rid of this because we're not using that high-low anymore. We're going to create a new one. We've already completed this. We completed cycled and everything. So now we're going to go from this point forward, and we're going to use this. We can keep mindful of what happened in the past, but we want to keep going forward in time. So now I'm going to use a smaller chart. And I'm going to focus on this smaller chart. And we're going to go to the structures that we drew currently in the, the diamond patterns. And if that makes sense to you. So we know what we've done in the past. You know, this is our current high right up here off of that second one. And that, that becomes key. Here's a drop. Structure again, structure again. We drew a, a little wedge pattern down here. We'll see the wedges and the triangles and all of that later. Um, we're going more off of the fibs and, you know, like the, the, the butterflies and the, the sea monsters, I call them. Um, So now we go back to our fib tool. And we're going to click on it. We've got the ratios all drawn right there. Oh my God, I hate when this thing does that. I'll draw it from the bottom up then. That's fine. All right, so I go from there, and then I'll grab it here, and I'll draw it all the way across my chart from that current low. I already know from the previous pattern, you know, uh, what I was looking for. Now I have ends. I have the high here, and I have the low here. Now, from here, we develop that, that diamond structure, and you're going to see this. Um, structure is we built our little house, our little home, our pattern, all right? That gave us a foundation, support of which inverted head and shoulders, you can call it, uh, a diamond, I can call it because of the, the high-end arc in the center. And then I drew the pattern, and then we broke out. We retested at the uh, axis line right here, and then made our move higher into the 38.2, which intersected um, with the diamond pattern area of 172.8 to 2.0. All right, do you see how I'm putting the picture all together here? You see how I'm using multiple instances of different fibs for different ranges and uh, uh, different highs and lows. You see when I'm doing combinatorial values on the chart, real time. So you see how I'm putting together the bigger and the smaller pictures? It's because I have my high, low here, high, low, and then I draw from the top to the bottom, and then 172 and 200% uh, work out to this. 
And do you see how the chart's reacting to these levels? Like, for example, it went up to the 172.7, sputtered, pulled back, and then uh, made another move, made a move up to 200%, sputtered for a moment, and then broke out and just spiked way up. This area right in here, by the way, is empty. This is like this giant move that dropped all the way down here real fast before it bounced up. Uh, and uh, again, you know, this is an empty value. That's why when it spikes up, it, it drops back down. And um, this line get off. I don't want my lines to be off. All right, but anyway, all right, so we have the high-low, and now we have the ratios. I have confluence. I have my 38%. That's our first one that we use, okay, when we draw them on a high-low. Well, first I pick the high to the low, so that's when I draw it from here to here. All right, I've got my structure. I've got a pattern, a smaller one here that gives me um, my base. All right, this, this developed as base right down here. So I'm using a combination. I got the high and low from the bigger range, and then I have the structure from the smaller pattern, and then the breakout that occurs and goes, you know, my way. So that's how I calculate them. There are two separate things that are working together. All right. Um, so do you see that? So high, low. That's your first two area. That's your fits from there. Then the inside range, 38.2, right up here, one-third, right? And then 61.8, right up here, two-thirds. Make sense? That's one. Okay, then number two became the structure of what we actually created was the pattern. So you can draw this by what you see. You're looking for a high arc to get a diamond. Uh, often with diamonds, you get head and shoulders. You just do. Or something of uh, like nature, you'll get three points that are equal. But it will give you a uniform action. Uh, like here's the back end. It, bounces off, but creates a structure. If I draw a line between the median value to the top, it, it's relative. And then I draw the line to the low here, connect it to the center. This creates the diamond, the bottom and the top, right? And encompasses the price, the ends, the major end here and the major end there. And so those are the two areas right there. Oh, sorry about that. Hope you have a good day. Um, all right, so what you see in there is this structure price that goes all the way through, goes up to here, pulls back, meanders on that line, and then breaks out, creates a wedge pattern here, which I won't go into. I'll keep that out of this. And retrades the axis or the median values down here and then decides to consolidate and break out above. All right, so you had your structure down here. Um, from here, I draw the, the top and the bottom from the smaller pattern, the diamond, up to 2.0 and 172.8. All right, so you see how I'm using two different um, uh, points and separate from each other? This is the fibs between the top and the, the, the high and the low. And this is the fibs between the pattern, the, the high and low. So I'm using the same low, but I'm using two different points, one being the larger range and one being the smaller pattern range to get the inside calculation. Now, that corresponds, this whole area is a confluence. It, the 38.2 fits right in the middle right here of the 72, 38.2, and 2.0. And what I do is I'll place orders here, here, 
and here selling each time, right? And when you get pullbacks, if I see like my points right down here was the smaller pattern, you had a little five way, one, two, three, four, five, pull back once, one, two, three, four, five, pull back again to here, I'll place my buys back down here um, and then start it all over again. Uh, placed my sells up here, I sold it again at 8,500, uh, we broke out above. I started selling all the way up to 9,000, which is this red block up to here. And I'll buy back again when we get back down to here. Mostly I'm going to be over hedged or, or higher amount of leverage against my buys because of the fact that I don't see any value until you get back down here to uh, all the way here. And what what's likely to happen is even though you can't see it, um, you have one, two, three, four, five. You're going to be five points again. It's going to be a completely whole new pattern in the future, but this um, is more of a wolf wave or um, uh, what would uh, they, they call it different things. But there's a, it's, an, uh, it, it's also a, like a sea monster or camel pattern. You got your humps and then your head over here. And uh, I can see it in the price. And so what's going to likely happen is that we'll uh, maybe retrace a little bit here or even go up to the highs and then and break back down. All right. Um, you want to wrap it up? You got reps to rip, rip it up? <laughs> you mean wrap it up, okay. Wrap it up. Um, wrap it up. All right, I'm, I'm going to, do you want to take some questions or look at some charts where we can look at some fibs? I, I, I was going over because of the fact that we missed, you know, some time. Yeah, in the I know, but yeah, it's also, you know, like... Uh, we could do it for next time. It's yeah. up to you. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. So um, let's take five-minute questions and then... Um, we're going to wrap it up, guys, and we'll continue next time, okay? So, um, uh, any questions? Okay, so, <laughs> the question is, hmm, no, <laughs> I don't know what yeah, it is. Yeah, I know, feel free, and questions are yeah. good things. Yeah. I mean... Could this feed be up? Uh, the, that's all depending on uh, the time we have left to uh, to to do that. But we'll, well the, do the, the difficult thing is uh, I'll discuss with Ivo is the conversion. Every one that I've used has not produced um, a, a clean video, and I'm I'm stuck with that. And I'm going to try using the software from WebEx, but they don't allow me to download it. And I gotta figure out how to get that software because their Kodak is a uh, pain in the ass. It won't it won't uh, convert anywhere else. It's like the Cisco made it so it could block everybody from using the Kodak. <laughs> like no, they're very else. smart. Good engineering, yeah. but uh, caused me a problem. Um any anybody else? How can you detect if it's going to be a diamond pattern. I think that's... Uh, well, the high arc. The first thing you look for is if you get something that looks like it's building a, a head and shoulders pattern, and then in the center afterwards, you get a high arc value. Like it spikes all the way up here like it did right there and created an impulse move. That's what we call an impulse move. Um, and it makes it disjointed where it comes back down and still creates the head and shoulders pattern and goes back to here, but does it from a very high point, right? Do you see how that's a higher point? And that's your diamond. That's, it, that's the point of diamond. And that's the structure that I was looking for, and that's why I was drawing it uh, before it ever got the breakout. That's a very positive thing when you get a reversal with a diamond pattern and a larger fib area like the 88.6. Um, and uh, I, I don't think people use this. In, in, uh, usually when they draw their diamond patterns, they do it off of uh, either an inverse head and shoulder or uh, like a double top type formations to give it a, a perfect square, rectangular type of 
pattern. But that's not what I've seen in real life. In real life, I've seen more prices like this. And, uh, and then it conformed to this type of geometry where it looks like a little pyramid. If I drew another line like right here, you'll see it almost like looks like little pyramids right here. And of course, I don't want to do that because then you're going to get the flat earth slash alien people on me, <laughs> telling me that, you know, part of the government conspiracy and this, you know. But you see how they look like little pyramids. <laughs> um, that happens a lot in nature, just like the little uh, M's and the W's and the, the butterflies or the, you know, patterns. I'll point out what actually happens on the chart. I'm not going to go over and draw something out of a friggin' book that doesn't equate to what actually happens. Um, I see too many people doing that. And they, they're like, uh, you've got these books on candlestick patterns, and uh, that's nice, but in real life, what happens most often? And sometimes that changes. Charts are always moving. If people all observe the same things and they react a different way, it creates new things, and you have to, to keep an open mind. Um, all right. So, any other questions? I mean, last, this last is basically. Question. Yeah, the last question that we've got is: Is a diamond pattern related to bullish trend somehow? Uh, no, because they could be inverted. I mean, if you see the spike upward like this from the high to low being larger, that is bullish. Whichever way the arc goes, but I can also tell you that this arc can go the other way. And I can show you examples of the pattern occurring to the downside. And uh, so whichever way the impulse move is pointed is where it's headed. That's where the, the majority of the, the volume, the, uh, the, the buyers have taken control and they control the, the, that's why we got the breakout and the big moves upward. And that's why I've been bullish this whole time from the green line. Um, and when I see that, what I do is I add more, um, uh, you know, uh, I'll break out inventory or uh, money, like I took out 20% down in here that I had stashed away, and I put it into the marketplace on this, on ETC, um, which if you want to take a brief look at ETC, you can see what happened. Um, do, 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 do. Because I was stuck on ETC and it's made up its value back towards me where I'm in the plus quarter, finally. Um, but I was stuck from ETC all the way from 21 down to 18. And then the 20% I broke got around 14, which was down here. And I was buying all the way from those levels. I was stuck all the way up here. And I liked it because of the fact that it had uh, uniformity and numbers all the way back up to 27, which it still does. And now I've scaled out you know, when, at each of these levels from 18 and, and uh, right in this area, this red line. And uh, I'll rebuy back again when it goes under 16, again under this green line. And I'll start the whole process over again if that happens. It might just go all the way back up to 27 and then 61.8 of the larger ranges and take out this center point, if you remember this one right here, this is of interest to me, um, and take that out and then keep going higher. Um, it's very bullish looking actually, so we'll see. Okay. Uh, but it ha did have an extremely large move downwards. But you see how I built a basis for that as well? And I try to keep myself profitable as much as I can. You can't on all, all coins. Uh, I, I can tell you many altcoins I've just got totally waxed on, and I just uh, holding. And at some point they will have an exponential increase, and their value will be you know way up there once Bitcoin reverses fully and all that. But for now, uh, I'll just sit on them and, and wait. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, each one will have its day, just like you get crazy moves in, in Verge and uh, ADA and all those other ones, and then you, I can start scaling out again just like before. But usually with the altcoins, I don't care because it's a smaller 
<laughs> portion, you know. I don't know about you, but I don't well, I, hold as yeah. much of those Ivo. No, we're not on the same Evo, line. Evo, no, we're not. We're not on the same same direction with dolls. I'm I'm totally into alts. I hate bits. Okay. So, so, uh, so. Uh, <laughs> I'm the value. I'm the uh, I'm, 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 I'm like the S and P five hundred. Yeah, no, I, I, I like I, I like stuff that really makes a difference. Okay, you're the, the rock and roller. You know, I'd like to try to get more into them, but it's not really been my thing. I'll, I'll do it in the future just to see if there's any, you know, uh, short-term trading, kinda, it, it, it's, um, you have to be yeah. so pinpoint and focused. Yeah, but but that's the fun of it. And, and the yeah. second thing, yeah. the margins that you can make, what we did on IOTA, if you, uh, just to answer the last question, dollar cost averaging, you can do that with any coin if it has potential, so uh, right. yes, but the ranges on there are more unpredictable. I yeah. find on the yeah. on the altcoins. So I could be buying and and it could go down like such a large degree with Bitcoin and Ethereum. I can calculate the the levels much easier, and I can control my leverage to a higher degree. With the altcoins, I don't find that as much. But you know what? You you said you're going to have a portfolio that we all can. Be a part of and whatnot. Correct. So, you so know, you guys could trade those and, and show me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, that's not my area. <laughs> no, we'll we'll get to that in a later part. So, there Eric, you go. thank you, thank you very much, guys and uh, girls in the chat room and in the in the in the WebEx. Thank you for joining. Have a nice day. And um, if you have any questions, you know. No, nope. the last one I'll answer is I do not use the same amounts. <laughs> I use more or less depending on the level. Like, uh, you know, it depends on how much I have and I've allocated ahead of time. Um, but I don't always use the same amounts. It depends on which level is which and which I believe is high confidence to low confidence, if that makes sense. And that that's it. All right, yeah. I'll let you wrap it up. Yeah, thank right. you. And have a nice day, everybody, or nice evening, or night, or sleep, or whatever time uh, zone you're in. Have a, have a nice weekend. And have a <laughs> nice weekend, yeah. There for you that, go. For sure.